Okay, let's explore this uh, determination of cash flow. Okay, I'm going to read right from here. Assume Riley Corporation has earnings before depreciation and taxes of 135000 depreciation of 55000 and then it has a 25% tax bracket. Okay, so it's in a 25% tax bracket. Show how you would determine the cash flow for Riley Corp. Present your work in a table so others can follow the logic easily. All right, so here's what we do, and I worked this ahead of time. We start off with 135,000, right? Earnings before depreciation, and that should say in taxes. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Uh, we can see that. Shrink this and bring this back a little bit. There we go. That'll put it on the screen a little bit nicer for you. Okay. Then what we have to do is subtract out the depreciation. We're working down an income statement, and that gives us earnings before taxes. Okay, now that we have that, we have to calculate the tax, which is given is 25%. So we take 25% of the earnings before taxes. All I'm doing is multiplying the line above times 25%. You can see the logic here, or you can see it up here. And I actually, if you want me to step through in Excel, you'll see earnings before tax. I'm adding the positive and the negative number to come up with earnings before tax, right? And we multiply times 25%. And when we subtract that, which, uh, by the way, I'm adding the two because I entered C10, the earnings is a negative number, so that I would uh, get a negative number in total. All right, so when I put that together, I get income after taxes of 60000 Now, then we have to ask ourselves, well, which of these items doesn't represent a cash flow, okay? Um, and depreciation doesn't impact cash flow, right? If you think about the depreciation entry, what the accountants will do is they will increase depreciation expense and increase accumulated depreciation. That's the entry they're going to make. That entry doesn't impact the cash account. If the cash account is not impacted, I think of it as a bookkeeping entry, right? It's just bookkeeping. It's a way to follow accrual accounting principles. And uh, by now, hopefully you understand that accrual accounting uh, recognizes revenue when it's earned and then matches those expenses to the revenues. So the matching can involve adjusting entries, depreciation expenses, certainly an adjusting entry, but it doesn't involve the cash account. And by the way, all adjusting entries don't involve the cash account. All right, so what we have to do then is add back the non-cash amount. By the way, depreciation represents the systematic allocation of the cost of a long-lived asset to the accounting periods or the income statements that benefit from the use of that asset. So the cash flow took place when we bought the asset. If we bought the asset for, I don't know, 400000 years ago, that's when it would impact uh, the cash flow statement. Or maybe we signed a note and didn't pay for it for a year. Well, a year later is when it would impact the cash flow. Okay, so in this example, we're going to add back, add back the non-cash items, which is depreciation, depreciation, I, I should say depreciation expense there, but we'll keep it brief. And that generates net cash flow of 100, 115,000, and that's the answer here. Okay, hope you found this helpful.